Alright guys, welcome back into the bow shop here. Um, hopefully this will be another quick one tonight. We're just, like I said, working through nightly after work. A little bit, but a little bit of building and tuning the bow so I can get out and start shooting. We're down under 70 days to go before bow season starts here in Nebraska. Tonight I'm going to go ahead and work with the bow sight only. So to show you my sight for this year, I will be running the Black Gold Ascent Verdict Assault sight. I'm pumped about it. Um, I'm probably not even going to get close to using all the features given the time I have between now and the season. And I want my bow to be pretty solid, I don't want to be tinkering with it too much when the season gets here. But I've got, I'll go through the options I got, I did get the custom built. So I'll start with the housing. I went with the three pin, the ten thousandths size pin. I like the smaller pins. I like just the three color. We went green, orange, green. Some people like the nineteen thousandths. I like the ten thousandths, the very fine pins. I don't like to be distracted by the bright or by the color of the pin, I would say. I know where the pin is and I want to be able to focus through the pin better with that more micro finer pin. I did go with the big dog housing, that's the two inch housing. I like that because I like to run a little bit bigger peep uh, and I like the bigger housing for the bigger sight picture, more light. And I also like that I can run it out further um, with the smaller peep given the big housing without having to get the eclipse on the circle. So, sticking to the housing, we did go with the Revenge Head as well, which has the micro adjustable pins. You just loosen the Allen on your pin and spin one of these wheels and it's going to raise that pin up and down without wiggling. Keeps them perfectly level, makes it super easy to adjust. You're not trying to remember which mark you're on and having it flop around while you try to hold it and tighten it up. You just spin this little wheel and watch it move up and down. Um, we did get the, I did buy later the light. Let's see if it shows for you really, not so much. Hindsight, I kind of wish I would have gone with three green pins just because they glow so much better. Or maybe a yellow instead of an orange on that middle pin, but. Makes it a lot easier to shoot here in the basement um, and indoor anywhere. I've been able to light that up. And the assault version of the site does have the micro adjust for windage and gain. Just a little tighten here. There's nothing to loosen, just got the click wheels to move it up and down and on your windage. It's also got the markings which make it really easy then to keep track of where you were and which way you're moving. Moving back, you've got the slider. We did get the dual indicators on this one. I doubt I even get time to even set up the slider before season here. We'll see. Maybe I get one indicator lined up with the 20 yard pin just so I can get out and shoot 60 or 80 for target practice. Um, but I probably won't get too much into the indicators or refining it too tightly. I'm not doing any western big game this year that I know of with my bow. It's mostly just going to be tree stand, whitetail, and maybe get to turkeys. We'll see. Um, they've got what they call the dial of death for your slider. Again, you don't have to um, loosen anything. This thing is not going to move unless you're intentionally moving it. But at least you don't have to go through and unlock anything before you can move your slide. I go ahead and keep it pegged at the top. Um, and then keep moving back. I went with the wing truss, the six inch, which was the longest. Um, I don't envision using much more. I've been, when I was running it toward the end of last year, on my old bow, I was running about the first or second hole only. 
um, but I could reach out a lot further if I wanted to and we'll just see different style of shooting um, I've got room to play that way and I went with the wing truss instead of the dovetail I thought the wing truss was just a lot more beefy you know I like beefy and durable um, beat things up and not have to worry too much about it so that's the sight we're gonna get it on the bow First, I'm going to go over a couple different ways of working on the first, second, and third axis for this black gold sight. Okay, so like I said before, you don't need to see me, you just need to see the uh, tools here. But like I said in the previous video, I like to show you guys some different options, different tools. This is the bright sight uh, axis. Basically, you can do first, second, and third axis on this platform. You could build a jig. You could do it on your bow, on the vise, um, but you can also do something cool, something like this. And I just wanted to show this to you guys. So on the platform here, you've got your side to side, your windage, and you've got your gain front to back. As far as being level, you've got these screws that you're going to use in order to adjust the platform so that this is level. After that, you've got a couple different ways of attaching your side that was able to actually attach the house, the base the wing truss straight onto here and so then we'll go ahead and put the side on okay and then I put a little bit of weight on here you can see it wants to tip on you so our levels are still good I just put this little bit of weight whatever I could find there just happened to be a heavy pair of vice grips so let's talk through how to do these different adjustments and go ahead and use my phone to get a second view on some of this stuff. In order to adjust our first axis, we're going to go with the slider. We want to make sure that this is absolutely vertical. Okay, so in order to do that, I got a little level bubble out of an old, you know, six inch level or whatever. We'll use that switch over show you on this camera then so I went ahead and I'm gonna put that right there so it's on that vertical slide so in order to adjust this as far as left to right there was an allen screw down here this one up here do not touch it's set into a hole this one has a little half moon behind it very very small that allows for just a little bit of micro adjusting. So you loosen this and put a good amount of pressure on there and just barely move it. So you can tighten it down and you've got your level there. And if I move these, you can see we're level there, we're level there. And that's our first axis. So then guys, we're gonna move on to our second axis is going to be the bubble in our actual sight. Okay, so that bubble then, to adjust that second axis, bring it around on the cell phone again. In order to adjust that second axis, you're just going to very, very lightly loosen this one and this one. And then you can see just those little tiny gaps on each side. The, the whole ring doesn't move very much. You can only move that no micromillimeters there. So when you loosen that, you just barely adjust it whichever way and you get that in line as well. So now we're still good. Just trust me, we're still good down here. We're still good here. And now we're great here as well. So we've got our first and second axis level with what would be the bow being level. Lastly then is going to be your third axis third axis comes into play as the bow sight rises and lowers, say you're shooting uphill or downhill. Where that comes into play is the twist here. Here's a knife. So this is the front of your bow sight. If this is open this way or too close this way, when you're at perfectly level, that bubble is going to lie to you. And it looks like you know you're still level like this even though you're twisted up front however you rise 
the bow up then. Now this becomes bubble up, right? Or if you go down, this becomes bubble down and it shows that third axis is off. So you need to have this flush perfectly square with the arm of the sight so that as it goes up, it stays perfectly square and as it comes down, it stays perfectly square and that bubble stays dead in the middle all the way through. So I'm just gonna show you, we're gonna go up, let's say roughly 45 degrees. And as I go up, my bubble stayed true. I didn't actually did not have to adjust any of the third axis. It was great. After I adjust, micro adjusted the first and second axis, the third axis was perfect. And then the same as we go down. As we're facing down now, my bubble stayed true. We're level here, we're still level there. If I needed to adjust that third axis, that is going to be on this wing truss. I think it's similar on the pro sites. On this wing truss, you're going to slightly loosen this screw. I mean, slightly. And then there is a hidden lock screw on the top right here and also just slightly loosen. You see there's some tape residue there's a warning sticker over there about messing with the third axis. After those two are loosened you're going to use this set screw here and tighten or loosen and it's going to, excuse me, it's going to swing, it's going to swing that front so that you've got perfectly square so whether you go up or down that bubble stays true, which is obviously a big deal for uh, Western big game hunters, people that are going to be shooting on crazy terrain, um, or even shooting out of a tree stand. You want that downward angle to be right. Okay then, so all that being said, if you didn't have something like that, or you don't have a jig, we can go ahead and we can show you how we would do that on the bow itself. So my first step on mounting this uh, black gold sight is obviously going to be just mounting that base to the sight holes. And like I said with the previous video, I like to just put a tiny bit of wax on there. Just try to help it prevent seizing up on me. Okay, on the base there's two little screws, screw holes that um, the quiver are going to go on. And those are obviously going to go toward the shooter side of the bow. Talk about the quiver on a finishing up video on the series. But you do have to get a different quiver usually with something if you're using like the wing truss like this. I had to get a tight spot quiver in order to get it around this dial would be in the way for most quivers. Try to be careful not to over tighten things. Okay, so we've got our base on. Let me just zoom in on it for you. Okay, so zooming in on it, you can see these here. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to go ahead and mount the quiver mount. So the tight spot quiver, you can see how that's going to work when you put this in here and it clips on to this clamp. So I just take my dial out. Obviously we're going into those open holes at the back of the base. Here's a little bit better view for you where I'm out of the way. Sorry about that. You can see on this mount, they 
actually have those lines so you can see that you're lined up pretty good. And if I chose to change the angle of my quiver or anything like that, you can move it quite a bit here. But for starters, we're just going to start basically where we know we're in the middle and we're vertical. And then that tight spot quiver is going to clip right onto here. And we'll go ahead and put the side in. That's just going to slide in. I like to put that quiver on first. Oh, now you can see we're actually going to run into trouble. I'm not going to be able to put this through. Let me bring you back in one more time. In order to be able to put my dial in, this has to slide forward. Now you can see we've got opening to get our dial in. So let's get that started actually. Now we'll go ahead and tighten this up where it looks like it's fairly level to look at then our wing truss. Um, like I said, I, I could reach out further and there's a lot of guys that like that as they feel in order to line up your two circles that far apart. You're going to have to be really steady and dead on. Um, there's others that feel like when it's that far out, it's very easy to torque and make big changes with a torque. Um, so I'm going to run it back here for starters around that second hole. As I screw that in, I just kind of feel it to go into one of those lock holes. We tighten it down. And there we go. So we've got the string level on, so I can still see that we're our bow, my bow is level. I can go ahead and throw this bubble back on to my first axis and see that we're still perfectly level. And then I can go over and look at my second axis and see that we're still level. And lastly, being on this uh, OMP October Mountain Products Versa Cradle Vice, we can go ahead whoop, I'm gonna lose something, and we can drop it down to that 45 to check the third axis and see that we're still level. We can raise ourselves up 45, and we can see our string is still level and our second axis there is still level. If I held my first axis on, still level. So what I did on the bright site, table site level, you could have done right here on this Versa Cradle or any bow vise of this nature or any jig that you build. So anyway, I'm pretty excited for where we're at now. We've got the site on. It's got first, second, third axis leveled huge so i think with our next video um we're going to be putting on the peep lining up the peep and tying in my peep and then we'll do a little bit of tuning as far as checking cam lean checking cam timing okay. then we'll just get to get to the fun stuff of sighting in knowing that the bow is tuned right so when we sight in, it's all about shooting it right. So, awesome guys. Thanks for checking in again. This, again, this was part three. You can check out the first two parts where we've gotten to where we are now and look forward to part four where we're going to tie in that peep sight. Have a good night.